Hello, welcome to Beauty in the Spirit. I'm Tina Thompson. And I am Joseph, and thank you for joining us this evening. How are you, Mrs. Tina? I am doing fabulous, honey. I am living. Look amazing in the feathers, the eyelashes, all of it. You are giving me drama and I live. I am so excited yes. to this show today. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited for this show simply for the fact that everything is everything, but it could be more if it's a legendary. Magic. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited for this show simply for the fact that everything is everything, but it could be more if it's a legendary. Magic. Yeah. Legendary. Yes, honey. We have some guests today, right? I was, was going to say, we are packed jam with legendariness, if it is a word. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are packed jam. This, this show, Beauty and the Spirit, as you know, Mr. Joseph, it is meant to inspire. It is meant to talk about the fitness of life, to empower. It is meant for inclusion. It is meant for everybody to feel as if they play a part as an artist. Am I correct? Exactly. We all have a piece of the puzzle and we all make this world a beautiful place. Whether it's dance, whether it's theater, acting, house music, all of it, the ballroom scene, we all play a part in this new world and being the new pioneers to make a difference for people unite in the new world. Absolutely. Well, that being said, we both welcome you to this new edition, Dance in the New World. How are we approaching our audiences? Today, we have a very special show for you, as we have said, but we will be in discussion and in dialogue with some of the great minds in our artistic community. But before we bring on our legendary first special guest, we must examine a timeline of a brief history in dance. As you know, from the 15th through the 19th centuries, we have court dancing to romanticism. But I decided before that, there was dance from the motherland, the archives of Africa, and the deserts of all of the earth, where the tribal dances accumulated and they brought forth this diaspora of growth and people and love and drum and all of it. But through that, we understand that after the 15th and 19th century, and you had your court dancing and romanticism, early 20th century, you have ballet to contemporary dance. And the late 20th and early 21st centuries, we had that genre of dance. But after that explosion of modern dance in the 20th century, the 60s saw the growth of postmodernism. Postmodernism towards simplicity, the beauty of small things, the beauty of the untrained body, and unsophisticated movement. The famous no manifesto rejecting all costumes, stories, and outer trappings in favors of raw and polished movement was perhaps the extreme in this wave. But unfortunately, the lack of costume stories and outer trappings did not make a good dance show for some. But it was not long before it set the decor and shock volume that we have re-entered the vocabulary of modern dance choreography. By the 1980s, dance had come full circle. And modern dance, by this time, Mr. Woodson, it was called and called contemporary dance. It was clearly still a high technical and political, notice I said political, vehicle for many practitioners existing alongside classical ballet. The two art forms were now living peacefully next door to one another with little of the rivalry and antipathy of previous eras. The present time see us no shocking work here, there, but however, these are still glimpses of the beauty that is to be had and shared. And much incredible dancing and joy in an age where dance technique has progressed further in expertise, strength, flexibility, and more than ever in history. Collaboration. Mm -hmm. So in conclusion, what am I saying is that at the same time, the mass culture has experienced expansion of street dance. Soul train performances with black dancers ignited a street culture revolution in a sense. B boy in New York, locking in LA, popping in California, Boogaloo in Oakland, California, Robot in Richmond, and all their own creative explosions happened around the 60s and 70s, each with their own histories in hand as innovators and serving as foundations. What I'm not saying, Mr. Woodson, is that mm -hmm. what I'm adding to this Wikipedia epic is the role of the house dance artists and their contributions to dance 
and the arts extending to the new world of minds and movement through expression as they serve as trailblazers for many, taking the music and dance cultures to clubs around the world, bringing us to recognize who, what, when, and how we approach dance in the new world. Ms. Tina, that was beautiful. I agree. I believe that back in the day, there was this division, this separation between the modern dance world, the ballet world, even like that world. And now we're at a point where we all need each other. In order to survive in this new world, we all need to collaborate. We all are inspired by each other. And we all need to recognize that we are all artists and we are important. And the arts are important. Absolutely. And that was so eloquently bring in our first guest. But first, let's take a look. I said, what's up? Now I need all the ballroom kids to come and dance, children down here. I need some dancing going on here. This is not a party till we start dancing up in this motherfucker, children. Yes, honey, we got problems. We go what to the dance floor. We work it out. So I think today is a proper place to be dancing on the dance floor, don't you think? So L O V E. Love, 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 love. Love, love, love. They need to stop it. Whatever they're doing, trying to shut our flowers down, honey. We must always keep this garden growing, children. You must plant your seeds in the sun and let us grow and grow and grow to the sun, children. I mean, don't get me started. I'm gonna go, girl. I can't. I love you. I love you. I love you. Happy World Pride. Happy Pride, New York. Submission is strongly suggested. I feel wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. You just made me feel much better too. You made me feel better. on more on top, more on top. So thank you. We are so honored to have you. We are so happy to have Mr. Kevin Aviant. He is a legend and he is amazing. And we are also talking about the house aspect. The fact that 
he was an innovator and still is an innovator at this time. He was able to do his thing, be his own creative, unique individual. He has inspired people like Lady Gaga. And we are so thankful that he is here. I know as a young man being in New York City in the early 90s, I would listen to his music. I would go to the club and listen to Dendada, um, The Rhythm Is My Bitch. And I was like, this guy is amazing. And it just shows you that if you are true to yourself and create your own style and your own pathway, you're able to like push forward and able to create and able to still be in this game. Mr. Aviance, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to say that personally, you are an inspiration to me. In the early 90s, I would listen to your music and I said, this man is just living in his truth. He is unique. He is unapologetic about who he is. He expresses himself. And you have inspired so many of the artists that are here today, from Lady Gaga on. I would just like you to talk about your inspiration for your style. How did you come into being who you are and feeling so comfortable expressing yourself? Wow. Um, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, uh, born and raised. I was, I was one of eight kids in my family. And um, I had an incredible mother. My mother knew from the get-go I was different. And she knew I was not going to be in the, in the um, playground playing around with the kids. She mm -hmm. knew from the get-go I couldn't be bothered with that. So she nurtured that. She allowed me to be down in the basement with with the records and to perform to myself. And to I went to start taking ballet classes and everything. And I found myself in the choir, of course, and mm -hmm. the school choir, school shows and everything. And I was never told no, you know, when it came down to expressing myself. Um, when you have somebody that powerful behind you, you really don't understand the word you can't. You can't, you don't understand the word, you are not gonna come through. You're not going to be the best at what you can be. My mother, she, my best friend, you know, and um, she, uh, I never felt I grew up until after she passed um, and she's gone for, for a while now. And I feel like I had to grow up then. But even during the time of the 90s and stuff like that, I I was a club kid first and um, coming from Richmond, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Florida, and then to New York. But mm -hmm. while in Washington, D.C., I became a club kid. And um, I then met all of the people here in New York City and decided to really, that's what I wanted to be was queen. I wanted to be a club, the, the, the club of the world, club queen of the world, you know? And so I conquered D.C. and, um, uh, found it very easy to perform for whites and blacks. Um, blacks, uh, and I hate to say it like that, but that's the way it was. There were white clubs and there were black clubs. Um, mm -hmm. Or then they would have a white night or, or alternative yeah. night, mm -hmm. and then there would be a black night. And black night would always be Sunday and tracks, you know? Mm -hmm. And tracks was everything. That was, yeah. that's where the beats, that's where the kids came through, this is where the queens came, the, the, the fashion queens came started the runway and everything. So I was getting major education in all this. Um, hairstyles, oh my God. Yeah. You girls knew me before, beforehand, beforehand. I yeah. had down, yeah. <laughs> down the middle of my back, Pocahontas, down the middle, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. here's why I don't have hair now. So <laughs> from the yeah. bonding loop. Anyway, so um, then I found myself, um, uh, going to uh, DC, going to Florida, to South Beach to get a lesson in drag because they had another drag culture down there that was always performing every night mm -hmm. and um, doing like uh, doing little like dinner theater type things um, at all the local little bars and clubs there and found myself with my friend Kitty Meow and um, right. dear, dear friend Kitty Meow and uh, Adora and uh, um, the late um, Paloma. And so I decided that was enough and then went to, came to New York finally. And um, New York, on the first day I moved here, the next day was Gay Pride and it was the Gay Pride that went up to the, to, to Central Park. I don't know if you remember that back in the nineties. And um, it was crazy. I just, it just changed my life. I loved it, loved it so very much. And then found myself trying to get a job here in New York and it was very hard getting paid $25 a show. Wow. And, uh, and they weren't letting me through at all. They didn't like that I was um, 
they didn't like that I was kind of like I wasn't feminine enough. I had a boy's name. They didn't like it that I was, you know, that I was really had like a, a certain look. You know what I mean? New York was very. I remember going on a casting for this um for a liquor company and um. They want to agree. So I show up, done, 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 done. Yeah. And this is like broad day. Like, me, I walk in, and all the girls at the time were all in jeans, tank tops, and model hair, like, mm -hmm. and with their books. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm in full mm -hmm. regalia. And they're just mm -hmm. like, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. then the girls, when I was outside, I didn't really care. I didn't get the gig too much. But being outside in the daylight, I love that because it's very mm -hmm. Miami. And then one of the girls walked up to me. Um, I don't know if it was Candace or Glenn. They were like, girl, what's going on, mama? You know, yeah. they never once shunned me. They were just like, girl, like, you know, I didn't know what that meant, but they were like, bring it together, girl. This is New York yeah. now. You know, there's a way of doing things, you know, but they that's underlying letting me know that. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you, we will learn when you will learn. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I found myself going to the nightclubs and, having a great time and everything and and then um the the sound factory was the um well then I ended up getting Madonna's um I ended up getting a casting for Madonna's vote Madonna's um secret video and um that changed my life. The next day life changed for me like like no other. And actually um I did nothing in the video. I mean I'm just sitting there and Posing, whatever, and they had a wig on and everything. So, you know, I guess they recognized something. So, New York City woke up to me. And then um, I was at the time working with a guy named Cesar Glendo. And Cesar Glendo was also doing costumes for dance companies and everybody, because he could do this bandex bodysuit, this one steam bodysuit that everybody wanted. So, um, he was coming from Texas or whatever. So, he became my, I became his muse. And uh, he was making costumes for me and stuff and outfits for me. And and actually said, you're no longer wearing wigs. You're going to stop the tucking. You're going to stop wearing titties. You're going to stop doing, you're, you're going to be Kevin. This is New York. Why do you need all that? Mm -hmm. Girl, this, he said, girl, it's not going to work anymore. This is New York. It's different. So I sh sh got rid of everything and just started being, you know, just more, more authentic, I guess. And, um, uh, I was a little nervous about it all, but then comes to find that people were living for it. And then when it came down to the dance floor, no one can tell me anything because that to me is like beats run through me and I swear to God, I lose my mind. I lose my mind. Yes, you know what, Kevin, listen, listening to you, first of all, let me say, you know, we're going to have a lot of viewers up here, but whether we do or not, it's all legendary. Let me say this to you. Yeah. I need to say this before y'all we continue. If we have any technical malfunctioning <laughs> or anything that might creep in to disturb this episode, yes. trust me, believe the man in the red hat will continue the show and I will pop right back up with my weapon. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> yes, I love you, Kevin. This is what I wanted to say. I, as First of all, even though you know someone, you still should do homage and research. Yeah. There was an article, Queer and Out, that I did some research on. And you, one of your um, quotes were, I am musically inclined. I have studied music and I am a gospel girl. I said yes, because I am together. It has been such a blessing. I have no complaints about it all. I love the evolution that I have gone through. See, that's my mantra. I am today what I have went through. Yes, and a lot of people don't celebrate what they've been through, Kevin. They they, they want to get to, you know, my mom told me that. You speaking of your mother, she's right here. Because let me tell you, what your mother has given you, I can see it's just all out, it's fused throughout through your person. My mother always told me, never, ever apologize for humble beginnings. Never, ever apologize that you ate ramen noodle. Never, ever question why you had struggle. Because the reason you had that struggle, and trust me, I come from a family with educational background and all of it. But there were times in my life, Kevin, that we did not always have things. There was a time when my mother had to go to work when my father left the earth. She had to work and, and, and we were used to him providing. So therefore there's another time where guess what? You have $10 for the week 
and that's all you got. And you and, and I had you had to you had to share that pizza. And and so ending this out to let you continue to speak. This is what I have to have on I have on my mind is that your your ending quote was a part of your quote, excuse me, was I respect, watch this. This is where I'm going. Let me adjust the feathers. <laughs> I respect RuPaul and what she has done. I'm going to read that again because this is for all the people watching and the people that will come on to this podcast later. If they know nothing, Kevin always asked me, he said, Miss Tina, what's your mission? I said, I love it. Like, yes. Okay. And he had me. And I said, that's right. So I respect that. Watch this. I respect. RuPaul and what she has done and what she has brought to light. It is amazing how drag has become so big and how people are obsessed with some of the queens, drag on, etc. Seeing these young kids, I'm going to reread that. Seeing these young kids, it's mind boggling. I, am I jealous or upset? No! It has helped all of us so much. You just keep it moving and stay true and respect those doing it and you will, you will get the respect back. Go past the makeup and the heels and the wigs. Really get into the artistry and leave a legacy. The look may be over, but you want people to write books about you. You want to leave something so they will say, Miss Thing was here. Now that right there, Kevin Aviance. That is why I, it's of so many other people we're going to pay homage to, but I... I adore you because that is right on your music, your catalog. You know, someone told me the other day, they said there's something going online now called Versus with the rappers. They do one rap person and another. So long story short, it grasped my attention because someone said on a show, he said, you know, the kids really have to keep in mind. They said, oh, you know, uh, Chris Brown, he can outdance, you know, Usher, da, 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 da. And then you know how the kids go on now, Kevin. And a person clarified it. He said, you know what? Chris Brown is a great dancer. And so is, of course, Usher. But he said, what Versus is about, don't forget, Versus is about the catalog children. Yeah. <laughs> and when he put that, it, I said, whoa, he gave me one, Kevin. He said, Versus is about the artists exchanging catalogs, meaning you could be a dancer that did seven pure wins, but what is your catalog? What works have you produced? What you could have performed in 90 pieces, but what have you produced? What have you put your staff on? And Kevin Aviance, it's all about that catalog. With yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Work, Tina. <laughs> Listen, when you get a message, that, like that. listen, you should, you, anyway, when you get a legend, what Mr. Winston, that says, work, I am on it. Yeah. All of our guests that are about to come up before we have our final words with Kevin Aviance is this. First of all, I'm closing the show with something, Kevin Aviance. Yeah. And you know why? It's because I can do that because I'm sure the producer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my baby in the back is smiling. I see you. You know who you are, baby boy. Yes, honey, I can do that. Y'all get where I'm coming from. Kevin Amiens, please, speaking of producing, and I, like I said, Google the man, his catalog. That's telling children now we have a new saying. She's fierce, he's fierce, but what is that catalog? I need to see the archives. I need to see the footage, okay? And we have another special guest up here, honey. She's in footage that is legendary. You can't even touch the footage that she has graced because you, this footage, it's going to be, through, it's, it will outlive her. But ending this with Mr. Obvious, I want to say this. Mr. Arias, please tell us about your upcoming projects because I do know you have an upcoming music video and you also have a show. Could you tell us about that? Um, uh, right, right now, right I, now I, I have I been have working been on a piece of um, music, music for the last eight years um, called Black Queen. And um, it is all the songs I've done. Cause I never really stopped doing music after my beating. So um, people say I took, took a hiatus, but I never stopped working on music. 
And so I just have a lot of music that had needed a place to go. And um, some labels picked it up, some people didn't, some things got put off in Europe, um, Japan, whatever. But um, I'm putting it all together in this one package called Black Queen. And uh, so that that being said, I'm putting a triptych out of, um, of videos, three videos, um, pretty much um, telling the story of a queen, older queen <laughs> in New York City that's just living in New York City doing his thing. Um, the video uh, is for, um, it's called Mary, but the second one's called um, Get Your Life, and the other one's called Working Day and Night, which is the Michael Jackson um, cover. Um, I'm very excited about it. And so, and then I just started the last year or so, I decided that I wanted to be in charge of my show, which means saying that from head, from beginning to end, which means that I wanted to play my own music. And um, which is a big thing for me because a lot of times when I go do a show, I have to hand my stuff over and I wait to go on stage and I do my show. There's a bit of, I'm satisfied, but I wasn't satisfied anymore. I wasn't happy with what you, mean, you put it mixed together and everything's great. Da, da, da. And every time I did a show, I had to make sure the mixes were different, make sure the show was different. So I didn't want people to talk about it. You can do the same song over and over again. And all they wanted to hear was country and dada. You get, you get really tired of that. And I didn't want to be that club queen or that club old diva or whatever. And right now you're only good at your last dance record anyway. So it's like, you have to make it interesting. And so it's doing all these edits, and edits, and edits, and edits. And finally I was like this, why can't I just do this thing live? Because I don't know how to work anything mechanical, whatever. So I decided to buy myself a system and everything and started doing it. And then a year, I told myself after a year, I was going to buy the proper material. So a year went by on my birthday, which is just this recently, this recently happened. And I went and bought the, got it all. Speakers, everything. And I started doing my... And I'm I'm a lot of, I'm a person that does I need to I need to do workshop I need to work something out before it becomes a show you know so I so COVID happened and I saw girls were doing it on Instagram I was like I could do that girl and I was like it's all about you know I need to perform because that's my therapy I perform if I'm not performing then I'm doing things I should not be doing okay if I'm not getting my art out then then I will find myself in the gutter I will find myself in a rut find myself addicted find myself all these things. And that are very, very hard on my body and hard on me. That the only reason I'm around is because of performing. You know what I mean? Because I always have to leave to go to a rehearsal. I have to leave to go work on a song, work on this, work on the studio. So that is the only reason I'm sitting here in front of you right now is because of that rehearsal. Okay? And that's the truth. And um, that drive. And so I, I... I decided to go on Instagram and do the thing. Now, beginning, it was rough. It was rough, 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 rough. <laughs> But when you get this, when you, you're only good as your, as your, as your um, technical stuff, you know, as the equipment you use. When I got the equipment, things changed because I could really get in there and do it. And then I know music. I love music. I love everything when it comes to music from classical to country to rock to dance, everything, everything. I love it all. And I have such a huge, huge knowledge of all of it. And I found myself mixing in a way that was just like, you, you really can't teach someone, you know what I mean? And it's like something jumped into my body and goes, takes over. Then you have this campy queen thing that goes on in my head. And then you have this black queen thing goes in my head. And it's just and it's just all mixed together. And I just, you know, this show is every Sunday at 9.30. And I hope you're there to watch it because it's, it's become an experience, really. It's become a movement for myself. Um, you know, they say if you t if you can touch one person in your in your life with your art, then your job is done, right? My thing is that I am I'm constantly being touched by other people's art that I I, I, I can't help but get mine out too. You know what I mean? So I am only I am like a, a a a what do you call it? A repercussion of other people's art. You know what I mean? I am a I am a I, I am a vessel for 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 anything that, that moves me from magazines to to photographs to movement to to actual art 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 to actual anything. So it's just like um I guess I'm like the old Renaissance, like a Renaissance person. You know what I mean? You know, I just I just live it, do it, and I I I don't know I don't know any other thing to do. And thank God that I have that because a lot of people don't, you know? So. Yes. And that and Kevin 
Listen, I my I told you earlier, my heart gets overflowing. I, my heart overflows when I just hear artists that have been through some things. I mean, just listen, just you alone, your story. You know, not it's just it's just so it's thought provoking. It's touching that the art really is in a lot of ways survival. And if we could get these kids to see that art is not about competition. It's not about that because, you know, I was telling Mr. Woodson that the real artistry is where he said, let there be light. Now that right there, that said, again, let the games begin, meaning let there be light. That means that now I need to see, I have my eye on everything. <laughs> I have my eye on, when there's light, Kevin, there's yes. an eye. Yes, everything that's hidden in some form or another is going to come to exposure. And yes. so I, that's why you telling your story and all these years of just admiring you and following you and in the clubs, you know, I never forget being backstage New Year's Eve, but that's a whole other set. You <laughs> turned out the Palladium like never before. You turned out the Roxy like never before. People to experience you for performing live is something. And, and on that note, I just want to say to you, that we salute you, we applaud you, and we need you. Yeah, yeah. And I just find it that our artistry, we our art fellow artists, all of us matter. Quiet as kept Kevin. Like I told you at the beginning of the show, my eyelashes and my feathers was all because I was coming up here with you. <laughs> yes. And you cannot enter the building in my company without an eyelash. I know that's right. <laughs> and what I'm saying is a lot of people in this pandemic before we let you go because i want you to tell us your cash app because uh when i do when miss thompson does things she does things with class and elegance and everyone knows that but there's always an edge meaning there has to be a sense of realness attached to that because no one wants class and uh prestige without a sense of understanding who you are behind it you know what? It's so funny you should say that. I'm reading all this stuff from the Harlem Renaissance right now, and I had no idea the queens and the faggots that were in this time. I had no idea. And it is, it has, I live in Harlem myself right now, and um, girl, I got because everything you're saying right now, they were all saying at that time in the what, 30s, 40s, no, no, 20s, 30s, 20s, 30s. Yes, yes. It's unreal, unreal the way you talk. So I feel like, I really feel like everything is meant to be. Everything is, what is supposed to be happy. This is supposed to be happy. This is a moment that's happening, and it's going to touch other people, and 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 they're going to uh, um, uh, um, study this and and see what's going on. All of our lives are very important. You know what I mean? It's very incredible. You know, you you're talking. I'm just like this going. Wow, I'm just having my head flipping around right now. So. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, coming from you is like I said, I pay as much as uh, as long as I live on this earth, I will continue to pay homage to the people whose shoulders that I'm standing on. Not only am I standing on their shoulders, I have had the privilege of studying amongst them. So there's a difference. I am not a Google. I have seen them and I have been around them in the flesh. Whether I was a scholarship student and I trailed the hallways, I have I have placed scholarship in very high prestigious places. I don't read about it. I was there. So that's a whole difference. And so someone like me, I respect you. And like I said, your music, it, 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 it's all in my, I mean, I played your music so many times in class, all the students who never even knew about you. They're like, Miss Tina, could you play Din Da Da again? Could you play Din Da Da again? And honey, the halls of the health club where you would just hear, bah! And they'd be like, Miss Tina is in the building because that Kevin Avias is playing. So before we let you go, Mr. Avias, I want you because I want us to contribute to your, your music uh, plight. Um, I will be playing my part on the side because that's in my heart. I just want you to say your cash app again because I want us as artists in this time, I want us to tithe. I want us to donate towards our great artistry. And and sometimes you have to directly give the artist so that you can know that the funding is in their hand. Mm -hmm. 
because it's like it's like grants. By the time you get to that grant, you don't pay for space, you don't pay for coffee or for the dances, you don't pay, you don't pay for wigs, you don't pay for feathers, you don't pay for hotels, and, and people think you are rich. People think Kevin, people think you are raining in the money. Honey, that grant, that grant coin done died long ago at the bus station. Okay. And now, now you are in your pocket. That's called the grant coin. In your pocket most of the time for struggling artists. So what I want to say to you is give us that cash app so we can donate one more time. My cash app is uh the dollar sign Kevin Audience. So K E B I N. Uh, capital K E V I N and then A yeah K E V I N capital A V I A N C E Kevin Aviance. So. Absolutely, and we thank you so much. Go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Sorry. And you have your show on Sundays at nine thirty. You said nine thirty. And nine thirty. Exactly. We changed it to ten. We changed it to ten o'clock now. So it's ten o'clock on your Instagram page. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what is? Well, I will be there. Huh? I will be there. Yes, I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to see all this time. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. I really do. I really I wish it. I wish it would go longer. I think that's what's the. I think that's the part. The, the the specialty of it because it doesn't go longer. You know what I mean? I right. Think it's special, that it's over after an hour. And Absolutely. Like, okay, it is what it is. Put it out there. Let's go. You know what I mean? And, and now that you said that, Kevin, you got me. You got me reminded. Tina, keep it flowing. Yes. Kevin, I will talk to you behind the scenes. Everybody, thank you for Kevin Arnold. Thank you, yes, bro. Wasn't he a bro? Oh, he's just amazing. An inspiration. Can we all come together? Can we all come together? Ding dong dong, ding dong dong.